I am extremely grateful to Jody Buckaloo, who works in our office and spearheaded this for us. Thank you, Jody, and to the rest of our staff who helped pull this together. And thank you to everyone for coming out today to join us here for this very special occasion. I want to especially welcome members of the 76th Army Reserve Operational Response Command of Fort Douglas who are helping us today and all active and veteran military personnel and their families. This morning we take a brief moment to honor the lives of those who served our nation on the field of battle and never returned home. Those who were taken prisoner or went, or went missing in action overseas. And we are gathered to honor the bravery and sacrifice of their families who were never given the comfort of a final resolution. We acknowledge the raising of the POW MIA flag today at City Hall is a small gesture, but I hope each of you here today, especially the families who you will hear from in just a moment, understand we take this action out of deep respect for you, your loved ones, and all you have given our city, our state, and our country. Today, Salt Lake City honors you and stands with you to say you are not forgotten. It is because of family that we are here today. It is because Carlos Jimenez, nephew of Private First Class Thomas Montoya, emailed, called, and came into our office to tell us his uncle's story. And he didn't just speak of his family. He shared with us the story of Technical Sergeant William N. Andrews, a soldier in World War II who entered service in Salt Lake City and was captured and killed. Carlos shared these stories as a representation of the hundreds of POWs and MIAs from Utah and Salt Lake City. And his determination made clear our duty to honor their memory and their families with this ceremony today. So thank you, Carlos. Today is National POW MIA Recognition Day. And in support, I would like to read a proclamation. Whereas America has long stood tall as a beacon of freedom, thanks to the men and women of our armed forces who safeguard our country and our ideals with courage, honor, and selflessness, we re rededicate ourselves to our ironclad commitment to never leaving one of our own behind. And whereas hundreds of service members from Utah who have been declared prisoners of war or missing in action from World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War, and whereas the observation, obser, observance of POW MIA Recognition Day began in 1979 to raise awareness of the large number of Americans who were still missing after the end of the hostilities in the Southeast Asia. And whereas of the men and women who served our country in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and later conflicts, there are currently over 82,000 whose fates and whereabouts remain unknown. And whereas we support the families of soldiers like Private First Class Thomas Montoya, Marines, and Technical Staff Sergeant Williams and William N. Andrews, U.S. Army Air Force, who are from Utah and entered service in Salt Lake City and whose remains have not been recovered to this day, and whereas on this day, by displaying the POW MIA flag at our homes, businesses, and government buildings, we send to these men and women and their families 
a clear message embodied in the words on the flag. You are not forgotten. Now, therefore, I, Jacqueline M. Biskupski, Mayor of Salt Lake City, do hereby proclaim September 16, 2016, as POW MIA Recognition Day in Salt Lake City, and encourage all residents of Salt Lake City to reflect upon the great sacrifice these men and women have made for their country and to honor them and their families as a nation forever indebted. Thank you. I want to now turn the time over to Carlos Jimenez to say a few words for us and share in the story that we heard in our offices. Um, Carlos? Good morning, everyone. My name is Carlos Jimenez. I'm the nephew of Private First Class Thomas Montoya. I first would like to thank the Mayor of Salt Lake for doing and recognizing this important day. Uh, my family, who is extremely large, but most of them, if not all, live outside the state of Utah now. They send their greetings uh, and the gratefulness to the mayor of Salt Lake for doing this. So you have my vote, Mayor. <coughs> I'd also like to acknowledge Ma uh, Mr. Matthew Rojas, uh, extremely competent director of communications, and Holly, who works with him, for uh, seeing this through. When I first approached the mayor's office on the idea, I met uh, with a wonderful lady, Jody uh, Buckalo, Buckaloo, who kept the candlelight burning on this project. So I thank you, Jody. On this special day, it's important as a mayor recognize there are over 82,680 missing personnel since uh, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and six other conflicts. So we recognize all MIA POWs. Uh, on this day, we recognize those from our great city. I also like to acknowledge those military uh, personnel that are here today, law enforcement, firefighters. I see uh, one of the mayors of Salt Lake City here today. And we thank uh, the other the staff members of the mayor's office. I also thank two individuals who are part of my family and brothers in arms, David Wood, retired Staff Sergeant and Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Bruce, uh, Executive Officer, 19 Special Forces Group. Um, I'm going to read a little bit about the circumstances involving the loss of my uncle. Private First Class Thomas Montoya was assigned to Dog, Dog Company, which nowadays we refer to it as Delta Company, 2nd Battalion, 5th Marines Regiment, 1st Marines. On August 1952, the Marine Front, the front lines, just what is now the DMZ, I've been, uh, I've been along there, and it's a two-mile buffer zone both ways, north and south of the DMZ. My uncle, uh, with other Marines, were sent north, what they called at that time the Jamestown Line. Most combat or, uh, Marine combat uh, operations consisted of patrols into enemy held toward territory firing artillery strikes on men, enemy held positions and troop concentration. In order to keep uh, a track on enemy movement, observation posts, listening posts, etc., was all along that Jamestown uh, line. On 7 August 1952, PFC Montoya was lost on one of these combat patrols. At 12.15 hours, that's quarter after 12, on 7th of August, Dock Company, 1st Platoon, including my uncle, were set off to try to recover Marine. Another Marine was missing, so they were sent to try to locate him and also to, pr to probe enemy lines. While they were doing this, they re received intense enemy fire from the Chinese. Yeah, we were fighting in North Korea, but we were fighting mainly uh, Chinese regulars at that time, not just uh, North Korean soldiers. A lieutenant leading the patrol set up a fire base with his machine gun 
Well, two squads assaulted Hill 123 in an attempt to uh, locate the missing Marine. Uh, the fighting became intense, so intense it was hand-to-hand -hand combat between the Marines and the Chinese regulars. Of course, as Marines do, they did take the hill, uh, but there was no uh, missing Marine there. At the end of the firefight, they counted 15 enemy dead uh, in and around the trenches before they withdrew. As they withdrew, they realized that there were three Marines missing, missing Sergeant Mandra, Sergeant Nixon, and Private First Class Thomas Montoya. Now, I was fortunate, when the official record came out, I was fortunate to identify and locate a Marine who was actually there. Most of the Marines that participated in this firefight, there was about 25 of them, most of them had died, were killed in the upcoming weeks of the battle. Uh, the others that did live and come back to the state, they're all, they're all gone, but one Marine. I was fortunate to talk to him. He lives in Florida. He was the FO. The FO was the forward observer targeting enemy uh, uh, opportunities to call in artillery strikes. He told me that the FOs have a, uh, a scope on them, and they, uh, like a binocular type thing, and, they, and he said he remembers seeing uh, three Marines through the scope going up a hill, <coughs> and then he took a picture of it. His mother gave him a picture before they boarded the ships in San Diego, so he put the camera up to the scope, and he took a picture of the three Marines, and I had that picture. But seconds later, they were killed. They were killed by uh, Chinese regulars. <clears throat> and that the fighting came, became so intense that other Marine units tried to recover the remains and many Marines were killed uh, in trying to do that. So the command decided to observe the, the, the three bodies and four to five days later, since they didn't see the bodies move at all, they assumed they were dead. This FO, the forward observer, called in uh, artillery strikes to destroy the remains of the three Marines. The intent was to destroy the remains because the enemy would uh, retrieve enemy uh, our remains and do terrible things to them. Plus, it was a command and control problem. Other Marines would see their bodies up on the hill, and they wanted to go and rescue them, and they couldn't, so they decided to destroy the remains. Um, <coughs> I do this today, I share that story with you on behalf of my grandparents. Luis and Edodofina Montoya. She's the mother of PFC Montoya. My mother, Faye, who for many years I hear these long stories about my uncle. I never met him, but I feel like I know him quite well now. The sisters of my uncle is Emma, Doris, Bernice, and two special aunts, Rosie and Leola my uncle's perfecto and bonifacio. Now, what I'd like to do, I didn't tell, share this with uh, Matt, <coughs> but before I close, I heard this saying once said, well, most of us in life give very little, give very little to society. There are some that do give some, while few give. And those few are the MIA POWs who continue to give for this country. And we must never, never, never forget these individuals. Because all of us here are benefactors of the sacrifices that these men and women have made for this great country. I'd like to ask Colonel Bruce to come up here. <coughs> We're going to the Department of Defense, uh, I request when I was in D.C. last month, uh, the Defense Department, uh, MIA POW office that I work closely with, sent me an MIA POW pin specifically for Mrs. Rosenball. <coughs> He's going to pin it on her appell and a deep appreciation from the de uh, Defense Department for the fact sacrifices that her brother has made for this country. Colonel Bruce, thank you, sir. Again, thank you, Mayor, and thanks to everyone for being here.
I'll be followed by uh, Ms. Ruby Nelson. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, Ruby Nelson, uh, niece of Sergeant Andrews, um, is here to also share a story about her uncle, and so we'll invite her to come on up and share that story with us today. I am Ruby Nelson. I am the niece of William Ned Andrews. Um, he is the brother of my mother who's sitting over there. Um, just a little bit of, about what happened to him was he um, was a technical sergeant and he entered the service in Salt Lake City, Utah on the 5th of August in 1942. He served with the 28th Bombardment Squadron. He was a radio operator and gunner, and his plane crashed during an incendiary bombing mission against Omuda, Japan. In the closing months of World War II, the United States pursued a bombing campaign against the Japanese home islands, and on the evening of 26 July 1945, uh, his uh, plane departed Northfield on the island of Guam. While the other 129 aircraft participating in the raid were in the process of dropping their ordnance on Omuda, uh, Uncle Ned's aircraft was observed turning away from the target and losing altitude with one of its engines aflame. Between 12.50 a.m. and 1 a.m. on the 27th of July, their aircraft was observed descending into a cloud bank. Um, and then it crashed approximately five miles north of the target city, Omuda. Most of the 12-man crew was able to parachute before impact, however, two of the crew uh, members failed to exit and their remains were discovered with the wreckage. Additionally, a local Japanese farmers killed one member of the crew on the 28th of July while trying to capture him. The local Japanese authorities captured the remaining nine members of the crew, including uh, Uncle Ned, and turned them over to Japanese Imperial forces. The men remained captives until the Japanese executed them, along with other captured Americans, on uh, the 10th and 15th of August of 1945. And we understand that this is after the war had ended. My mother, Evelyn, is Ned's sister, Ned's sister, and in Mom and Dad's house, there, were, there was always an 8 by 10 portrait of Uncle Ned. So growing up in that, with that picture prompted uh, questions from us. And the responses were, he was mom's older brother, the oldest, of, and he had three younger sisters. He was 15 when their dad died of consumption. He got a cow for his FFA class at school so they could have some milk to drink. He did what he could for the family as the, ma the only male in the family during the Depression. Dad told me that he always lived up to his principles. And because you see, dad and he were the same age. They were from the same small town, and they did the same job during the war. But the difference was, besides the arena in which they served, was that Dad came home and Uncle Ned didn't. That subtle message in our house was to be grateful that we were able to be a family. Well, Uncle, Uncle Ned gave his, or sacrificed his life, and um, also those who were not so lucky, and gave their lives for our freedoms. Thank you. Thank you, both of you, for sharing your stories this morning. Now I'd like to introduce Colonel Doug Cherry, Chief of Staff of the 76th Division, to say a few words and order the raising of the flags. <clears throat> Mayor Bukus Bukuski. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us to serve with you on this National POW MIA Recognition Day. Distinguished guests, current military personnel, and those who have served, thank you for joining us on this important day. As a soldier, I am honored to be here fulfilling one of our country's most sacred commitments, remembering our military personnel who have yet to make the final trip home. This ceremony recognizes not only our prisoners of war and our missing in action, but their families, friends, and fellow service members who remember them. 
We have not given up hope that one day we will know the fate of those who serve their country so selflessly. We do not have any American POWs in captivity from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, but that doesn't mean we have forgotten the thousands who are still listed as missing in action from the Revolutionary War, two world wars, Korea, Vietnam, and the Persian Gulf War. Cutting edge forensics are allowing our POW MIAs to finally be identified and returned home. The Defense Department, and now the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency, have personnel working long hours in field labs, archives, and remote areas around the world recovering and identifying missing service members. While it is a long, slow, and tedious process, such efforts provide closure and comfort to those who have waited for so long. In 2009, I had the great honor of escorting the families of a World War II bomber crew who had been missing in action for 65 years. Those soldier airmen had been found, identified, and that beautiful summer morning laid to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. That day, 11 families received the closure they had waited so long for, while all of us who served were reminded of the great efforts our nation will make to ensure we all come home. The families of the missing deserve this. Our service members deserve this. Anything short of these efforts falls short of our company's determination to bring home all service members with the honor and dignity that they deserve. I am a soldier, and part of our soldier's creed says, I will never leave a fallen comrade. So today, we as a nation reaffirm our commitment and we rededicate ourselves to this important task. We will not call our mission complete until all of our fallen return home to those who keep vigil for their loved ones, to those who are still waiting, to those who have never given up hope. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand as we raise the flag of the United States and the POW MIA flag. Color Guard, post the colors.
ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and take your seats. Thank you to the color guard. And thank you again to everyone who came here today for this profound occasion. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated and I know that uh, we owe a great debt of gratitude to those who serve this country. So thank you again for being here and have a great day.